Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Monday. Sure hope you had a great week and Erica Netta with you here was the temperatures were really nice this yeah. week and we were out at the ball fields all weekend and I know you were staying busy as well. <laughs> Netta. Yeah, being outside was just nice. I mean, Saturday Balboa Park, we just basked out on the grass yeah. and it was just a beautiful weekend. I mean, really overall felt good, but things are changing. So with that, we're going to send it over to Evan. That's right. Good morning. Yeah, significant changes in the forecast as we start off your Monday. Clouds are building and showers are in store for your morning commute at least. By the evening, many of those showers are going to taper off, but we'll probably hang on to those overcast skies. Clouds very significant as we start off the morning. Showers everywhere in green. So North County is seeing the most. This is Costa Mesa all the way up north. So you can see as you move toward about Oceanside and Carlsbad is where we start to see those showers pop up for the day expect temperatures in the low 60s uh, shower chances diminish toward the evening. We even have a small chance to see a little bit of the sun, but expect the next several hours to involve quite a few showers along the way. Nothing going on in traffic. Looks like things are green across the board. Slightly slower, slower speeds across the Coronado Bridge in the 20 mile per hour range. Back to you. I haven't thanks so much and developing this morning. We're getting more information about last week's shooting in the gas lamp. We are now hearing from a friend of the victim, 28 year old Justice Bolden. We also have new information on the suspect and the weapon police say he used. News 8's Chris Crow is live this morning with the latest developments. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Just 28 years old and Justice Bolden's life cut short tragically. We spoke with his best friend, as you guys pointed out there, and we're hearing a lot of good things about him, including the impact that he had not only on his friends, but also his family. It was literally the best dude I've ever met. I mean, he was just his joy for life was truly infectious. Um, one of the coolest dudes I know. I mean, and just one of the one of those kind of people that could make a friend out of anybody. And that's Reese Taylor. He and Justice met in college, played baseball together. We're best friends, as you just heard. After graduating, he told us that Bolden was on track to live out a dream of his. He was planning to become an airline pilot. He actually took the job there as a valet with the Pendry through Ace Parking to earn money for the training needed to become a pilot. Unfortunately, all of that ending in an instant when Justice was shot and killed last week outside the Pendry. Now, uh, the person who shot Bolden, it, part of this random shooting rampage that we saw break out there in the gas lamp. The gunman then, after shooting Justice, went on to shoot four others a block away before police and bystanders were able to stop him. Those four made it out alive, but as for Justice, Taylor says that uh, his death is going to be felt by so many, but at the same time, some of them are at peace knowing that they'll always be looking out for him. It's going to be a long and tough road living without him. And uh, but but me and my wife have both said we just we feel a peace of knowing that, you know, he's always going to be with us, always going to be watching over us. Same with his family and always going to be watching over his family hard as well. Now, something else that we're learning about this shooting, we're being told by police that the gunman Travis Sureshte used a ghost gun that night. It's a firearm that's actually built with a kit, and so there's no serial number to actually trace the actual gun itself once it's built. Uh, the use of these guns were being told on the rise. It's something that we've heard addressed locally here by San Diego Police Chief David Nislight, as well as on the national level by President Biden after he took executive action to try to crack down on the access to these kits and these guns. Now we've also learned the shooter did have a criminal history history misdemeanor for carrying a concealed weapon and an active warrant for impersonating a security guard without a license. He's now charged, of course, with first degree murder as well as four counts of attempted murder. There is a GoFundMe that was started by Justice's work trying to raise money, put together a fund. If you'd like to go ahead and contribute to that, you can go to our website, CBS8.com and click on that story link. Eric Netta. Chris Crow, thanks so much for that. Just such a sad story. Well, today is the deadline for comments regarding the placement of a convicted sexually violent predator in the Mount Helix neighborhood. We've been talking about this neighborhood for a while now. Many uh, families are protesting this. Now, 64-year-old Merle Wakefield is being considered for placement in a home on Horizon Hills Drive, and that's the same home being considered for 78-year-old convicted predator Douglas Badger. Many neighbors have been protesting this possible move. No decision has been made in the Badger case yet. Comments on Wakefield's placement must be submitted to the Sheriff's Department Safe Task Force by today. His hearing will then be held May 10th.
Well, Californians can once again receive the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. Over the weekend, the California Department of Public Health announced clinics may administer the vaccine once again after the CDC and FDA lifted a temporary pause prompted by reports of rare blood clots. Clinics must provide educational materials to inform patients of possible side effects and other vaccine options. The County of San Diego has not released its plan for some 16,000 J&J vaccines currently in its possession. If you're still looking to get vaccinated, Cal Fire San Diego is distributing more COVID-19 shots this week. It's offering the Pfizer vaccine at the Hamul Intermediate School on Lions Valley Road today. And tomorrow it will offer it at the San Ysidro Health Center in Campo. Those interested in getting the vaccine can sign up for an appointment on the My Turn website. And here is how the county vaccine distribution numbers are breaking down. More than 2,530,000 doses have been given according to the latest update. That means just over 54% of people in the county have received one shot. Over 36% have been given both doses. I'll be joining those numbers here uh, today. I'm All getting right. my second shot. Nice. Right, here we go. County health officials are reporting 160 new COVID-19 cases, four new deaths to report here, bringing that total now to just over 3,692. COVID-related hospitalizations fell by 19 to 172. Well, it was an historic night in Hollywood. The first Academy Awards ceremony held in the pandemic set milestones with some of the award winners. Nomadland scooped up the Oscar for Best Picture, and then Frances McDormand won Best Actress for her role in that movie. Chloe Zhao became the first woman of color and second woman ever to win Best Director for the film. This is for anyone who has the faith and the courage to hold on to the goodness in themselves. Anthony Hopkins took Best Actor for The Father. Many had expected the late Chadwick Boseman to win posthumously for his final film. Daniel Kaluuya was named Best Supporting Actor for Judas and the Black Messiah. And Best Supporting Actress went to Minari's Yu Zhang Yoon. We will have a lot more on last night's biggest moments coming up in a live report for you at 6.30. It did keep a few of us here a little up uh, up late last night. Yeah, I right, watched Evan? a little bit. I know, Evan, you, you watched a lot of it, too. And, uh, boy, uh, kind of anticlimactic at the end there. Yeah, right? it was uh, <laughs> a little bit different. I mean, usually they save those Best Actress, Best uh, Picture, and Best Actor uh, awards mm -hmm. for, you know, they have several minutes to give their speech. Right. They're kind of the most inspiring speeches of the night. They went through all of that. Last was Best Actor. And then when Anthony Hopkins won, he wasn't there. No so show. They were just like, like oh, busy. man. That's all Things that, I know people on Twitter were having a field day of like, what do you guys think Anthony Hopkins is doing? Yeah. It's got to be pretty important, I would yeah. think. Yeah. Well, people are like, maybe he was just having a nice dinner yeah. at home. Like mm -hmm. someone saw, he saw a text from his manager that he won another Oscar and was like, oh, cool. cool. Okay. Like, you know. Sipping on a Chianti. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, hey, he's oh, yeah. in his 80s. Yeah. He can do whatever he wants, right? Yeah. <laughs> he can enjoy his night. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it was still, you know, we're still getting in the mix of watching these awards uh, in the pandemic times. So it's, uh, it's always interesting to watch how the award shows change uh, as we get through more portions of the pandemic. So let's talk about uh, what's going on as far as your forecast goes. I should probably queue up what forecast graphics look like as opposed to traffic first. Uh, but we will get to traffic, which so far is actually looking pretty nice on the roads right now. We're seeing some showers pop up in your forecast. It's across the northern county coast for the most part, but then making their way uh, countywide by the time we get to your afternoon. Temperatures are going to rest in the low 60s as opposed to uh, the 70s or 80s that we'll see later on this week. But you could see how that progressive warm up really starts to take shape. So if you aren't going to be a big fan of the cooler temperatures and showers to start off the week, well, don't worry, your time of the week is going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with plenty of sunshine in the mix. Uh, next couple hours do hold a good potential to see these showers push farther south through Oceanside, Del Mar and then downtown San Diego. And you can see how by the time we get to 930 AM, they're just going to be pretty constant. So scattered shower activity about a tenth of an inch is the best estimate for most spots on the map, though the South Bay could be seeing the lightest accumulations. All of these showers are going to continue in a very scattered format through your Monday night. Early Tuesday morning, we see a couple more come about, but in general, Tuesday is going to be a cloudy day at times, partly cloudy by the time the day comes to an end. And then Wednesday, we move back toward plenty of sunshine in the mix. Almanac for the day shows temperatures will rest about five degrees below normal for this time of year. Overnight lows are just about constant. Record territories back in 2004, 88 degrees. We're going to see the potential to get to those mid and upper 80 degree temperatures for Thursday and Friday. So possibly Possibly near record breaking, but it doesn't seem like we'll actually get there. And then it looks like so far rain this month. That's what we're going to need to start to see those numbers improve on. And we will today with rain expected again about a tenth of an inch is what we're looking at. Roads are looking okay right now. A lot of green on the screen there should be able to head out at your normal speed. Back to you.